The Legend of Zelda is a classic and iconic video game series that got its first start in Japan in 1986 and then it came to America and Europe a year later. Since then there have been several games in the series, with the newest one being called Skyward Sword and it coming out on the Wii next year. The first game I ever played in the Zelda series was Ocarina of Time, which is also getting a 3DS remake real soon. Now some of you might be wondering, you're supposed to be doing indie games, why are you talking about Zelda? Simple, fan games. And just in case you don't know, I hate fan games. The only exception is Super Mario Bros. Crossover. If you haven't played that game, you should go and do it now. However, I'm not going to ramble on about how I feel about fan games as that would take way too long. So we're going to get right into our Zelda fan game known as Link's Quest. And guess what? It's a trilogy. Starting off the first game, it looks not that good. It looks better than Band Massacre at least. So we have Link there just running in place in a dark greenish brown area that looks sick. And there's rupees all over the place. Also, the rupees are pointless. There's no point in collecting them. You can't buy anything with them. Then we have Link's house with Link on top and his horse, which I guess is Epona or Epona. But look at it. The horse is almost as big as the house. At least Link, the rupees, and the horse are drawn all right. It's not sprites like some people would like, but I'm fine with it. But what I'm not fine with are the controls. It controls like Snake. Why do you have to be that control? You can't stop moving in any direction as soon as you decide to move. So we enter Link's house and it's as big inside as the map outside, but I'm used to that in games by now. So we open the chest, get the wooden sword, and now we can use it. How do you use it? Do you just stab out in front of your body like every other game? Hell no. What you do is do this weird spinning move, which I assume is supposed to be his spin move in all the Link games, but it's always a charge attack, not his regular attack. And look here, these enemies don't even hurt me. In fact, Nearly all the enemies in the game don't even hurt you, like these Dark Links who are attacking you with their sword. They just say, foolish mortal, and then you bounce off of them and do a moonwalk. So if they're just there for a barrier, then why not just have a goddamn barrier? And if you're wondering about the music, it does have the music from the Zelda games, but it doesn't ever feel appropriate, and the song's never completely finished before it begins to repeat, and there's a full few seconds of silence in between the repeats. Maybe it's a glitch or something, I don't know. So we go through a couple similar rooms, and then we get to a boss. I guess it's a boss. You kill him in one hit, and that's not a boss by my standards. So after you kill him, he swears he'll return someday, and then you go through a portal, and apparently you're now outside, because there's a nice green outline, and there's bugs. Also, there's a treasure chest, but guess what's inside? Pointless, pointless rupees. So now that we're outside, there's horses and chickens. Chickens that teleport you all over the map at random. Why do they teleport you at random? So you can talk to the banana and the mew if you feel like it. Why the hell are they in the game? I don't fucking know. So after a couple more areas, we come to a dark link in a fire tunic, which you easily defeat. One hit turns him into fire, hit him again with your sword, and then he turns into a heart container. Why is there a heart container in a game without any health at all? I don't fucking know, nor do I really care. Now we appear at a cavern or somewhere like that, and there's new enemies. A guy with a mace that turns into Dark Link whenever you hit him once, I have no idea why, and bats that resemble keys. So after we go through a few rooms filled with enemies, we get a chest that, of course, has pointless rupees. So we rescue Princess Zelda, who says, The place is safe, even though it's apparently not. Look at all the enemies that are still left. And look at this! I'm stuck in the fucking enemies! They can't kill me, there's no way for me to get out, and the only thing they want to do is talk to me! So I take about 10 minutes to get out of this mess. So after leaving that level, we get the fairy bow, which allows us to click on enemies and kill them, including the next boss that looks very similar to the first one we killed. And before he dies, he says something that I assume resurrects Ganondorf at some point. Oh, and look here! Princess Zelda has been turned to stone. Stupid princess bitch. But we're still not done with the area. We still have to kill a dark link in a purple tunic. It's all too easy like last time and all too similar. So after we finally get out there, we get to a desert filled with evil smiling faces that you have to shoot in the face with your arrow because you can. And cacti that make you go ouch. 
Anyways, as soon as you finish that, you get an ice wand which allows you to freeze the cacti and then you shatter with your sword to get through a door. And this brings us to our next boss, a Dark Link dressed in yellow, which you must freeze and shatter with your bow. Takes a little while to figure that out, it's the most challenging boss so far, but still kind of easy. So now we're at the end of the game. You get the Master Sword and we face off against the Red Link while Ganondorf, who doesn't even look like him, and Princess Zelda are behind a barrier. So the Red Link is a little more challenging, but not that much. You gotta hit him with your sword, then shoot him with the bow, then freeze him, and then hit him with your sword, and somehow that kills Ganondorf. I don't know why. Also, it's not explained how Princess Zelda is no longer a stone. So you talk to Princess Zelda, then you teleport to a place where you can talk with some of the characters in the game, including Ganondorf, the Mew, and the Banana. So then you go to the Triforce, and then the game just closes out. And that's the first Link's Quest. And now it's time for Link's Quest 2. Now, this is a sequel, and it's not his first game anymore, so one should expect it to be better. But it's not, and it's only about a month apart from the first game. So, we start out on a beach, or somewhere like it, yet nothing is explained to why you're even here. At least in the first one, you start out in front of your home, but why are you on a new quest? The controls are exactly the same as the last one, and also the music glitch is still apparent. And also, I'm noticing that the size of the game changes with almost each area for a while, so I'm constantly having to resize the game to make sure that I can record it properly. After a few areas, we apparently arrive in space! How can I tell it's space? Look at the stars! And a new gameplay mechanism is shown, that is, having to get keys. But at least he's trying to expand in his game. You even have to climb a wall in this game. It still controls like snakes, so it's kind of bad, but still. We then come to a graveyard full of jumping skeletons. Also, I learned that collision is horrible in this game. Look! I am in front of the graves, but because a pixel of my head is in the way, I can't go through! After pointlessly killing everything on screen and collecting all the corpses, I soon figure out that I didn't even have to do that. All thing I had to do was go through a grave. If that's the case, then why don't they just disappear? There's no point in collecting them besides just doing it for fun, but if they reappear as dead corpses that I can collect, it seems like I need to collect them. After going through the right grave, I come to some warlocks around a fire. But as soon as I move, they go batshit insane and disappear all over the place randomly. Also, the skeletons guarding the door now completely disappear. Even more confusing is if you freeze the video right after you go through the grave, you can see that you start off in a completely different area. But after you get the key, you leave, then you're back in space and must kill the moblins to get the hook shot. More or less, it just teleports you to the side with blocks. So we come across our first boss. It's a plant with the MCP on its head. All you gotta do is use the hook shot on it once, and then it dies. One hit, one kill, just like in the first one. But it's right here I discover a glitch in the game. Use the hook shot while attacking, and you can clone Link. Who knew cloning people was so easy? So after getting key and going through an area with some plants, I guess they're supposed to be Deku, we arrive in Kakira Forest. Really, this is supposed to be Kakira Forest. It looks nothing like it. But you soon come across some Deku blocking the tree. So what do you think you should do? Hit them with your sword? Well, you'll be somewhat correct. You gotta get a new sword from a Kakira for... 20 rupees? But I haven't been collecting them! Oh wait, you don't need them at all. That's right. Even though he asked for 20 rupees, you don't need any to get it. And apparently he just magically disappears and turns into the sword himself. I tried the game again to make sure that I didn't have any rupees in my pockets, but really, you don't need any to get the same result. So cut down the Deku and then we get inside the Deku tree. He sure looks ugly in this game. So cut down more Dekus, get a key, light torches, and soon enough you'll get to this. A ghost. Maybe he's supposed to be a Poe, but this boss is a little trickier than the other one. It takes two hits. But after the first hit, those warlocks from before appear here magically and still like batshit insane. Also, the fire disappears. So after you defeat the boss, you go through a door, you get a key that somehow transports you to the bottom of the sea with a door just floating at the top of it, and then we arrive here. And like in the graveyard, you gotta go through a grave. This time I knew where to look. More warlocks appear in a room, you gotta light a torch in, and then you hookshot to get through the door. Walk through a few doors, and now we're in a cliff. With more warlocks. Seriously, 
Why so many warlocks when they do nothing? And this is where the game really pissed me off. See, you control like you would in Snake. You keep going in a direction until you press in another direction. So that means you can't stop, and when you hit the fire, you get sent back to the start. But guess what? Those rocks are coming down and block your path, and can freeze you, causing you to have to restart the whole goddamn game. What do you have to do? You have to keep tapping left and right, left and right, back and forth until the rocks pass you. Even if you do dodge the rocks, then one of them wants to chase you up the cliff. Does that make sense to anyone? So after lighting another torch in the next era, we get to our next boss. A giant spider, I think. It's easy like the other ones. Shoot it with your hook shot, and then hit it with your sword. Simple as that. You then get the master sword, which is so conveniently placed in this tower, or wherever the hell you're supposed to be. After that, you meet the final boss. A Sage of Shadows. This boss is as easy as any of the other bosses. Hit it with your hookshot, it turns into a blue blob, seriously, and then hit it with your sword. Oh, but it's not done with you yet. After going through a door, it then becomes some orange and black squares. Yeah, those squares are extremely evil and a real threat. Just hit them with a sword and you'll finish the game. Yeah, go out the door and you somehow end up on the beach. You are just magically placed on the beach and there's even a boat ready for you. That's two shitty games down. We still have one more to go. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The next game might be pretty good, right? They say the third one's a charm, and this would be his third game that he created. I highly doubt that's going to be true. But anyways, the next video, which will be coming out next week, will be over Link's Quest 3 and maybe another Zelda fan game. Who knows? Have you played a shitty indie game recently and believe that I should play it, show it off, make jokes, and whatever else I do? Then drop a link in either the comment section or email me. And if the game is awful enough, I might show it off. And if it's really bad, I just might cuss a whole lot.